One important type of bonding in chemistry is covalent bonding. So chemical bonding involves some force that's going to hold atoms together to make molecules and compounds. Covalent bonding is one type of that that involves the sharing of electron pairs. And we can see how this works by making use of Lewis dot symbols. So let's imagine that we have two fluorine atoms. Fluorine has seven valence electrons, so we're going to put our seven valence electrons around this fluorine atom, representing them as little dots. So this is the Lewis dot symbol for fluorine. So we have a second fluorine atom. It will also have seven valence electrons, and so we can put these electrons around the fluorine atom. Now Lewis tells us that atoms like to gain or lose electrons so as to complete their valence shell and have eight electrons around them. Typically that's for main group elements, so hydrogen will tend to only want two electrons around it, and there's some other elements where things are a bit different still. But for main group elements, they would like to have eight electrons around them. So we can see that each fluorine has seven electrons, but if they agree to get close together and share a pair of electrons, like this, so that there's a pair of dots in between the two F atoms, so they've agreed to share a pair of electrons. So there's a shared pair of electrons between them, and if we count the electrons around any one fluorine atom, here we can count one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the ones that are shared, because they're sharing, we get to count them as belonging to both the right-hand fluorine and the left-hand fluorine. So that's seven, eight. And so each fluorine will now have eight electrons around each one. That's an octet. And that's what we mean by a covalent bond. So a covalent bond will happen when we share a pair of electrons between two atoms. And we can see when that happens using this Lewis dot model. And so this picture that I've just drawn is sometimes called a Lewis dot structure. And oftentimes we will represent a pair of electrons, a shared pair, that we will say that that is equivalent to just drawing a straight line. So in my Lewis dot picture for fluorine, I can represent it like this. A straight line right there represents a covalent bond or a shared pair of electrons. So that's the shared pair of electrons that we were talking about. And then the other valence electrons are simply represented by dots. Let's look at another example, this time between two oxygen atoms. So oxygen has six valence electrons. So there they are for each oxygen atom. So oxygen would like to gain two electrons so that it has eight. So how can it do that? Well, if it just shares one pair of electrons, like this pair, we would get a structure that looks like this. Now each oxygen atom has closer to eight electrons, but still only seven electrons around each oxygen atom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's not a complete octet. So what we can imagine doing is that these two single unpaired electrons that are here, that we can agree to share those as well. And so we might make a structure that looks like this where now there are two shared pairs of electrons in between each oxygen atom, and the rest of the electrons go on like that. So we call this, we represent this by two lines holding the atoms together, and we call that a double covalent bond. So that's another way of representing the bonding between the atoms, and now they're sharing electrons so that each electron has eight. Let's check that out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I said each electron has eight. I meant each atom, each oxygen atom has eight electrons around it when we consider sharing. So the oxygen here on the right would still have one, two, three, four. And we get to count the shared electrons, five, six, seven, eight. So eight electrons, again, an octet. So this word covalent comes from the word valence, which is the number of bonds that get formed. And the word co, like you might see in words like coexist or cooperate means kind of to come together. So you can think about that in your definition for, for what's happening here. Now let me bring up this important idea of valence. And this is an old idea from chemistry, and valence has always been known to be the number of bonds typically formed by an element. So I say typically because sometimes we see, the, see deviations from this. And it's easy when you look at a Lewis dot symbol to figure out what the valence of an atom is and the typical number of bonds that it will form. Because it turns out that valence is equal to the number of unpaired electrons in the Lewis dot symbol. So for example, looking at some things that we've already seen, the Lewis dot symbol for fluorine has seven dots, but one of them is not paired up. So this is one unpaired electron. So fluorine will typically only form one bond. 
And that's not always the case, but usually that is the case. Oxygen, on the other hand, has two unpaired electrons, so it will typically form two bonds. Hydrogen has a single unpaired electron, so it will typically form one bond. An atom like nitrogen has three unpaired electrons, and so nitrogen will typically form three bonds to other atoms. Now if we check that out with our examples that we've just looked at, up here for uh, fluorine, we see that we've got a single bond between the uh, two fluorine atoms. So the one line represents a single shared pair, and we call that a single covalent bond. If we look down here at oxygen, oxygen has two shared pairs, and so that counts as what we call a double bond. So a double bond then counts as two bonds. And so oxygen atoms, we just said, typically form two bonds. Well, there they are, one, two. So how is it that sharing electrons can help to join atoms together? Well, we can look at it from maybe a classical picture, and let's think about hydrogen. So hydrogen would form a bond to another hydrogen atom to make an H2 molecule by sharing a pair of electrons. Now you might say, hey, this isn't a complete octet. Well, that's true, but hydrogen fills its valence electron shell with only two electrons in that shell. So other atoms on the periodic table will typically take eight. The next two rows will take eight. So let's draw some pictures of what this might look like on the atomic scale. So the nucleus of a hydrogen atom contains a plus charge. So there are the two nuclei. So if I just put these two nuclei down, they are going to repel each other. So there's a repulsive force between these two nuclei. So I'll indicate that with this red arrow here, trying to push them apart. So I don't want to get those two nuclei too close together. Now if they're electrons, so here's an electron, let's say, and here's an electron. So the two electrons from the hydrogen atom, um, those electrons will also exert repulsive forces between them like that, but they will exert attractive forces to the nucleus. They're going to be pulled towards the nucleus. And actually that's happening in both directions. So we're feeling attractive forces in both directions. So you might think that the attractions and repulsions basically cancel each other out. And if that were the case, then there would be no benefit for these atoms hooking up. And we know that hydrogen molecules form. So we imagine that on average then, the two electrons spend a little bit more time here in between these two protons. So that these two protons feel a net attraction to the negative electron cloud that's in here. Now remember, these electrons are buzzing all around. And so sometimes they're over here, sometimes they're over here. We're going to imagine that they spend a little bit more time in between. So what we say is that we build up the electron density. And density, we think of that as mass per unit volume. Electron density would then be the number of electrons per unit volume rather than mass per unit volume. So what we're saying is that we have a higher density of electrons here in between the two atoms. And it's that net attractive force of the two nuclei to this electron cloud that helps to hold the whole molecule together. So that's how covalent bonding works and how sharing electrons and building up electron density between the nuclei of atoms can help stabilize a structure and form a molecule.